Let's turn our Bibles to Romans, book of Romans, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10. We're going to look at two verses, Romans chapter 10, verse 1 and verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 1 and verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Brother Jack, can you pray for the message? blood which you shall on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away, past, present, future. And thank you for sealing us with the Holy Ghost of promise yes, uh, so that whatever we do, we're still going to wind up in the right place, Lord God. And thank you for the King James Bible. Amen. Thank you for the brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you for the ministry that you have allowed us to be involved in, to lead people unto you, and to Spread the truth, Lord God, the right doctrine. We ask you that you'll be with those who are not doing well physically. Uh, please be with them, touch them, heal them according to your will. And for those of us who are here, Lord God, we ask you that you'll help each and every one of us to be attentive to your word. Help us not to be distracted or allow the devil to do his work in us, Lord God. Help us to just focus only on you, Lord. So we rely on you for that. And we ask you that you'll fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit, give him the liberty to preach your word, Lord God. Convict us, Lord, and help us to change for the better. And thank you for being so good to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The title of the message is, What is your heart's desire? What is your heart's desire. When we read Romans chapter 10, verse 1, you could see right away the passion and zeal Apostle Paul had for Israel. He had a passion for souls. His number one thing in his life is to see souls get saved. What is your desire right now in your heart? You know, just be honest with yourself. I think honest is the most important thing when it comes to growing as a Christian. Honesty makes you realize who you are. You are a saved sinner. That's it, nothing more. You know, sinner saved by grace. You and I are nothing more than sinner saved by grace. And it humbles us constantly. If pride comes into you when you think about who you are truly in the sight of an almighty God, then you'll think twice. Who am I, right? And as a saved Christian, you know, hopefully everyone here and people who's listening, if you have trusted Jesus Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior, then you are saved. No ifs and buts, you know, not by works of righteousness, right? By faith only. Then you need to have some kind of desire set in your heart. Your desire can be many, many things. It could be materials. It could be, how should I say, you know, opposite sex. It could be, you know, envy, anger. You know, some people are very, very angry people, and they're bitter people. Their desire is to put other people down. Their desire is to just get angry. You know? Maybe you guys went through the same stage once in your life, or maybe you're going through it right now, where your desire is not to see souls get saved, your desire is to just prove people wrong. Your desire is to get back at people who done you wrong. You know, because there are many cases where Christians can't do anything for Lord Jesus Christ. It's because they're just stuck at a place. They're just stuck at a place where they're constantly thinking about what this person's thinking, what they did to me. How can I get back to them? It's retribution after retribution. 
If someone did do something wrong to you, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You leave it up to the Lord. It's not for you to do it, right? If someone stole money from you, of course, if you need to take legal actions, take legal actions, but don't let it just eat you alive. If someone slapped you on the face and you had no you know, chance to slap them back, just let it go, right? You cannot you know, find or you cannot wait you know, all your life waiting for opportunity to slap that person back. What's done is done. And Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they call according to his purpose, according to Romans 8, 28. So all things happen for a reason, and it's for your own good. So you have to let things go. And there's always envy that's stopping Christians from thinking about souls out there. And it also includes jealousy. Instead of having charity, love for brethren or lost souls out there, you start having jealousy and envy. Why does that unsaved person have everything that I want that I don't have? Even further, why does that brother and sister, who's same saved person as me, have things that I want, but God never gives it to me? I'm jealous, I'm envious, you know, I will put on my fake face when I say hi to them, but deep inside, you're just miserable, jealous, envious person. All this happens because of pride. You have so much pride in you that whenever it doesn't go your way, whenever some thoughts does not align with your thoughts, you start thinking everybody's wrong, but I am right. How many of you guys go through it on a daily basis? I mean, you know, our married people, how many of you guys, you go through it when you have you know, discussion or argument with your loved one, your spouse, and you always think that you're right, and you always think the other one's wrong. And then a few hours later, days later, and then you realize that, hey, you know, I was the wrong party, right? And then, but worst of the worst people will never admit. And I don't want any of you here listening to be that person where you're so prideful that even though you are wrong, you will never admit it. How can you win souls for Christ if you can't ever admit who you are, right? If you cannot admit that I'm a sinner just saved by grace, I'm worse than a dust, I'm just, you know, terrible, terrible, terrible human. Unless you have that kind of recognition, realization, you can't do anything for the Lord because pride will always come in the way of you doing something for the Lord. Many times, people go out there and preach the word, witness, going door to door, but, but there's no joy in their heart. Why? Because their heart's desire is not to get people saved or have, see people get saved. Your heart's desire is to increase numbers. That's why. You want to put a check mark. As you know, you know, Brother Jesse, you know, there are a lot of quotas in certain religions. You have to stand somewhere for a few hours. You have to discuss certain topic with anybody, and then it counts towards your quota. And then you will have, you know, better position, or you go to paradise or whatnot. What if that person does not meet the quota for a certain day? For first six days of the week, they met the quota. But on the seventh day, they didn't. You think they're a happy person? No, they're going to be miserable. Oh, man, I've done wrong. Ugh, how did I not meet the quota? But a lot of Christians act like that way. Because winning souls for the Lord has not become your heart's desire. It has become like your checklist. It's your own goal. Because you want to tell people that, hey, I led so many people to the Lord. I led 100 people to the Lord. Well, you know what? I read 130 people to the Lord. Oh, you know what? I read 2,000 people to the Lord. What are you going to say? I mean, it's not about numbers game. And you have to really realize that when I witness to people, when I pass out a tract to people or talk about Lord Jesus Christ, you know, I don't do it because 
I want to tell people that I led these people to the Lord, and you know, I did seven people, ten people, hundred people. You know, then you make it a competition. You know, some churches we have competition. It's ridiculous, right? Like, okay, that family led ten people to the Lord. Woo! This family, we got some work to do. You know, you did only five, right? When when in heaven, right, even one lost soul repents and gets saved, there's joy and singing in heaven, and you're just arguing about needless things, 10, 5, you know, yes. blah, blah, blah. So check your heart today. Where, what's your heart's desire? Is that to show off to other people? Is that to, you know, make yourself look better compared to other people? Or is that like Apostle Paul, pure heart, where he wanted Israel to be saved. Do you want lost people out there to be saved? When was the last time you thought about it, right? I'm sure many of your hearts desire, you know, a lot of times it's for good reasons. You know, I wanna support my family, right? I wanna do this for others, right? It's all good and dandy, but does it go along with the line of helping or, you know, you be in the position to witness to other people? Apostle Paul, look at verse 14. Romans 10, 14 said, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Does everyone around your circle hear the gospel of Jesus Christ? I mean, that's a question that you should ask. Does everyone in my circle, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're in between, did everyone in your circle, like whom you're acquainted with, whether they're your friends, co-workers, you know, be wise about it, of course, your family, cousins, everybody, have they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have they? I mean, if, you, if, if I were to give them a survey, you know, 20 closest people around your life, and first, first question is, did that friend, did that so-called friend of yours talk to you or try to witness to you about Jesus Christ? If they check mark no, then something's wrong with you. You don't care about lost souls. I mean, if you can't even witness to your close ones, where's your heart's desire? Do you really love your loved ones? Do you? It's not about giving them gift. It's not about just giving them a call and ask them how you're doing. As Christians, your love for them will show by how you love their souls, right? I mean, when was the last time your heart's desire was that, man, I really want that person to be saved? When was the last time when you saw a soul walking by, I want that person to be saved? You know, we drive by, LA is full of traffic, and you see millions of souls out there. When was the last time you looked at your heart and your heart says, my heart's desire is for these souls to be saved, right? Whether it's LA, whether it's here, Ontario, whether it's, you know, Paris, Riverside, you know, Hollywood, anywhere. Crestline, right? Chino Hills, Irvine. I mean, because we are spread out everywhere. Cyprus, you name it. Buena Park. Do those people in those area have heard enough gospel, you think? They haven't. They haven't. Then what are you doing about it? Cathedral City, everywhere out in the world, especially in this circle, in this area, Southern California. I mean, do you really love souls out there? You know, let's not kid ourselves that I love souls when you don't do anything about it. Let's not kid ourselves that I love souls when your heart's desire is not about loving souls. Your heart's desire about everything else, right? Why do you come to street preaching? Is it because your desire is to see souls get saved? Or is it because you want to just hang around with friends, eat dinner afterwards, and have fellowship? You know, a lot of times people switch things around. Fellowship, good. But if you put that over something else more important, it's no good, right? It's like this. You know, you don't put God first, 
but you put other things of God first, then it's not going to work. You do say, I witness to people, I street preach to people. It looks good, but if you do it for your own glory, it's all for naught. Then when it comes to having passion for the souls out there, when it comes to have, you know, witnessing to others, you have to get first thing right. That first thing is that your heart's desire is to see people get saved. Your heart's desire should be that all these people around you be saved. You know, there was a survey back in 2014 by Religious Landscape Group. 58% of the population, I'm a little bit surprised, right? I thought it would be lower. 58% of the, those who were surveyed believe in hell. 58. So it's more than, you know, majority, right? 34% said they don't believe in hell. And 8% said other, I don't know. I don't know what they're, probably they were high or something. They couldn't even answer. But when it comes to it, 58% of the people actually believe in hell. Because there's so much coverage out there in the media. So many, you know, athe atheists, you know, those people like always being in the front line of the news. Like people don't hear the majority, right? Yeah. You know, media will, you know, present a lot of, you know, small groups interest. But when you go to, you know, general population, they're usually opposite. So think about it. If you were to talk to anybody, right, one of the two, say you talk to four people, two of them most likely will at least believe in hell. And if you do believe in hell, you know how scary and terrible that place will be. Then you have a conversation starter. I mean, don't you want people to get out of hell? Because they're already on their way to hell. There's no if and buts. Like, you talk to people and they think they have a choice. You know, uh, you know what? I, I'm not going to go to hell, but I'm not going to go to heaven either. I'm just, I'm just good where I am. Uh, you fool. You're on your way to hell. You're born as a sinner. So you're on your way to hell. So you, your only choice that you have is to not go to hell or burn in hell. That's it. Then if you know what you know as a Bible believer, I mean, you see that these people around you, they believe in hell at least. And what are you doing about it? It's your heart's desire is to see them get saved. Right? And many times, there are a lot of church goers, but they're not saved. Why? Because they don't know the right doctrine. They don't know the right gospel, simple gospel. Right? And you're like, what's the gospel of Jesus Christ? Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you don't know anything, and if you haven't really you know, studied the Word of God or have grown, at least you could go to 1 Corinthians 15. And someone were to ask you, what is this gospel you guys preach? 1 Corinthians 15, you know where to go. Because sometimes you, know, you get stomped. You know, people say, oh yeah, okay. You know, there are always smart, I like people out there. You know, their goal is not to see people get saved, but they want to just argue with you. Always answer by giving them the Bible verse. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. So th through this gospel, you and I are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So a lot of people just be careful because a lot of people know it in their head, but they haven't believed it in the heart. So a lot of, that's why you can't just come to church or go to church and think that you're saved. You can't think that you're saved just because you repeat it after someone in a prayer. Very dangerous, especially for people, young people or people who are so emotional. That's why it's dangerous when your emotions get involved. You know, like in a rock concert setting, you're all like high, you know, soul is, you know, high, and you accept something, and then you don't know about it, and then you're always questioning, because maybe in the first place, you didn't do it from your heart, and you didn't do it, you know, not knowing everything, you just did it with your head. So, verse 3, for I've delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's it. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, 
he died for our sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, buried, and he rose again. And if you trust that, and if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, believing that you know, he's God who died for you, then Bible says you have eternal life. Man, I mean, that's so simple, right? You know, it's not like I have to you know, walk a thousand miles to a certain place. It's not like I have to give millions of dollars to charities. It's not like all this. There's no strings attached. That's the best thing about salvation. I mean, don't you want to tell that to others? No strings attached. I mean, this life is all about strings attached, right? Sure is. Man, how many people can you trust in your life besides from your husband and wife and your family? Even at that, right? I mean, how many people can you truly trust? If you have five people, you're a truly blessed man. You're better than a billionaire. If at one person, you're still blessed. It's really, really hard to find people who truly, truly you can trust because everything, there's strings attached. Like, he gives me a gift. Okay, so I have to give gift to him when the day comes around, right? I mean, think about birthdays, right? Well, I got something on my birthday, so I guess I better give it to that person. And man, God forbid, if you don't give that something back to that person when the birth, their birthday comes, you know, they're not going to talk to you for like a whole year until their birthday comes back again. What does that show? Strings attached, right? When you do things, don't be a person with strings attached. You're not going to be a good soul winner, right? You're not going to have, you know, love for the lost souls out there. Don't do things to your loved ones expecting something back. I mean, especially married people, don't ever do things to your spouses because you expect something in return, right? You're nice to your wife today because you want her to be nice to you as well. No, you just do it because you love her, right? Amen. Same thing with, you know, wives. Yeah, you don't make your, you know, husband or, you know, do good to your husband because you want something good in return. No, you do it because you love that person. Same thing with children. You don't do things for your parents expecting something in return. No, you do it because you love your parents. And then above it all, you do something for Lord Jesus Christ. You love him. That's why. Not because you expect Lord to give you something in return. You don't want to be that person who's been gung-ho, have all this zeal, passion, doing something in the ministry, right? You know, teaching, preaching, witnessing, and edifying brethren, but you didn't do it for the right reasons. You wanted things in return. Then it will ultimately burn up, right? It will burn, ultimately it will dry up. And then what's going to happen? You're going to be that person, very bitter person. Bitter, bitter, bitter. Bitterness comes from people who expected something but did not get it back. That's why, you know, people, you know, whether they're saved or not, right, you know, free, free willy people, right, you know, they just let life flow, right, they don't care whatever happens, you know, they don't care if you wrong them or do good to them, they just live their life, they have like no worries in their life, and they always seem to be happy, but many of the Christians, especially people who's listening, your life gets miserable. Why? Because even though you know what's right, even though you know what's right, you know, biblically and doctrinally, but your heart's desire is at the wrong place. When your head knows what's right, but your heart is not in the same place, it's not going to work. I mean, think about the Bible, right? I mean, love your, love your wife, right? You know what's the right thing to do. But if your heart's not in it, you can't. The things that you say is fake. Love your brethren, right? Like, I love you, sister. But deep inside, you're like, oh, man, she ain't no good, you know? But I, I have to say it, right? Because my head said, it's, you know, that's the right thing to do. Then eventually, it always kind of come out from your mouth. And ultimately, things that's inside of you will come out, whether it's to your wife, whether it's to your husband, whether it's to your children, or just, whether it's to your close ones. That's why your heart needs to be corrected first. 
It's your heart's desire. It's to be, I mean, it's to see people get saved. And when that's the goal between you, your husband, your wife, and your children, everything aligns in place. Because you know what? I don't really live for myself. I want to live for others. And living others means that what, you know, my Lord did, and he died for lost souls out there. You know, I want to follow in his footsteps. Then my heart's desire is truly to see lost ones, lost people out there get saved. And if I can do something about it, I'm going to do something about it. Like Apostle Paul, right? You know, he avoided meat so that he wouldn't offend that person to get saved, right? Or that win that brother or sister. I mean, will you be able to give up your meat for the sake of a person? Unless you're vegan or vegetarian already, right? I mean, I, I love red meat, right? I love it. Steak, carby, you know, brisket, you name it, barbecue. I love red meat. But I'm, you know, I'm put in a place where this person is vegetarian. They hate meat. They do not want to talk to anybody who even mentions anything about cows, pigs, you know, chicken. And then you guys are together eating lunch. And you know already, if I want to get to this person, I can't eat meat. I can't order burgers. I can't order steak. I can't order any of the chickens. That person already ordered like quinoa salad, right? And then it's time for you to order. If you really, I mean, if you really want to, you know, get through that person, you'll be like, okay, you know, I'll order something that I might like as a vegetarian, right? Impossible burger, you know, or whatnot, right? Why? I mean, it's, a, you know, it's, it's just an example, but why? Because your desire, your heart's desire is that, you know, if I can't do anything for that person, at least for them to hear the gospel, I'll do it, right? Would you give up anything in your life so that other person can get saved? I mean, it's sacrifice. You say, I love Lord Jesus Christ. I love and I, you know, thank God eternally for what he did for me. And I want to follow him. I want to be obedient to him. The first thing you got to do is give up something. Sacrifice something. I mean, is your heart's desire to really, really see souls get saved? Then, are you willing to give up something? Are you willing to sacrifice something in your life so that souls can get saved? You know, sometimes it's material. Like some materials you have to give up, right? You know, in order to see other people get saved. Why? Because you need time. If some things are taking all your time away from spending time with the Lord and spending time with the lost souls out there for the purpose of souls getting saved, then you have to give it up, right? What are you, I mean, what will you sacrifice in your life? And don't think that this is just a, what you might call it, it's an option. You and I, you know, it's a command that we go out there and preach the word. It's a command that we go out there and witness to other people. Turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. All these things of the world are stopping many, many Christians from witnessing to other people. You know, these things of the world are stopping you from having the right desires. So you need to really get right and really examine your heart today. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Lord said, ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I mean, every part of the earth, you should be witness for the Lord. Right? Whether you're walking down the street, you know, whether you're at some place, whether you are, you know, high place, low place, you shall be witness for the Lord. Turn, let's turn to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15.
Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, what are you doing? Are you preaching the gospel to every creature out there? I mean, is your heart's desire in the right place? I guarantee, if you're like Apostle Paul, like in Romans 10:1, and many of the forefathers of faith, then and now, if your heart's desire is to see people get saved, you are preaching gospel to every creature. If you're not, then I guarantee it's really, really hard to find in your life when you are actually preaching to other creatures, witnessing to other creatures out there. But there are consequences, everyone. If your heart's desire is not to see people get saved, then their blood, Lord said, we lie, we car at your hand. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. So think about it. What am I doing with my life? Where are my, you know, where's my heart's desire? Do I really want people to get saved? Is that like my number one is coming from bottom of my heart? Or is that, you know, I just live a, you know, comfortable Christian life and just waiting for Lord to return and that's it? When you're not even obeying Lord's command? Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But look at this. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Look at verse 20 at the end. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Don't think that you're going to get away with being a lazy Christian. Don't think that you're going to get away with being a prideful Christian. You're not. Lord's fair. I mean, Lord is 100% fair. That's why we have judgment seat of Christ. You'll be judged for everything you've done for the Lord, whether it be good or bad. And knowing the terror of the Lord, think about it. In that judgment, you have an almighty God, creator of the universe, judging you in front of how many millions or even billions of people who are saved, you're going to be ashamed. You're going to be embarrassed to the point you never, ever, ever could imagine. Why? Because your heart's desire is at the wrong place. I mean, don't you want, when you go through that fire, you know, those precious jewels to be remaining? Right? Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, your heart's desire should be, always should be to see people get saved, always, and that should be number one. And everything else will be put in their place. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So everything that you've done for the Lord, you know, it will be going through a fire. And one of the things from verse 12, precious stones. Precious stones refers to people that you've witnessed, to people that you led to the Lord. Yeah. If none of us have any precious stones, you live the wrong Christian life. You should have some precious stones you know, by leading people to the Lord. You know, it's not always about you know, completely you get to the point where they accept Christ. You put in the seed, right? You witness put some few words in, you know, give tracts. So what do you think is going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ? In your case, will Lord find that your heart's desire has been and was to see people get saved? Or was it for your own good? Was it for your own desire? And I'll finish with this. 
The reason you have wrong desire, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. So you have one or the other. You'll be ashamed or you have this desire to see people get saved. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mary, will you have this type of testimony where your heart's desire is to see people get saved, where you could say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Or will you be that other 98%? I mean, this, this survey was a long time ago. They said 98% of the people never talked to anybody about Christ. 98%, right? Are you going to be that 98% where they're going to say, I was ashamed of gospel of Christ? Man, think about it. How are you able to handle that at the judgment? Man, I was ashamed of gospel of Christ. That's why I didn't open my mouth. That's why I didn't you know, give him track. That's why my desire wasn't there. Man, I'm, I'm scared personally, right? Because, you know, I have many faults, and I know that there are times, you know, when I should do it, I don't do it, right? But it should not stop me from stopping there. You know, I need to get right with the Lord, get up, and continue. And you have more chances that the Lord will give you. Praise the Lord for that. Then when the opportunity comes, when your heart's desire is to see people saved, then you're going to act upon it. Again, like James 1.22, you're not going to be hearers only. You know, everybody here and everyone, listen, you won't be the hearers only. You'll be doers. You're going to go out there and show that, you know what? It's not for my own gain. It's not for my own pride or selfish ways. But it's for Lord Jesus Christ because he saved me. He loved me. I love him. And because my heart's desire is to see people get saved. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come short always, Lord. We don't realize that we're just prideful, wicked sinners just saved by grace. And we really do need to think about where our heart's desire is, Lord. Do we really want people to get saved? Do we really have that heart to sacrifice and keep up things so that others can get saved, Lord? Help us to get right with you and help us to realize that you know, we're here to be a witness for you, Lord God, and help us to just get rid of our selfish, lazy, coward ways and go out there and be a bold and courageous witness for you, Lord. Please be with, you know, Pastor Shrive and the upcoming surgery, Lord. Lord, please let your will be done, Lord God, and be with the family. And I pray that you'll be with everyone here and listening, Lord, during these crazy times, Lord God. Help us to keep our faith and just go out there with the right heart's desire and live life that's pleasing to you. And Lord, number one, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.